The LG V50 is the best Android phone of 2019. Fight me! This video is sponsored by Hostinger. Now that I've settled into being a full-time YouTuber, it's time for me to focus on creating a website that'll be the one place for all things painfully honest tech. Hostinger really helped me get going in just a couple of minutes. I was able to put together a site where I can get my merch up there. Check out Hostinger now and get up to 91% off for all web hosting plans. Go to www.hostinger.com forward slash honest tech and use the coupon code honest tech for your order. These are honestly some of the best prices I've ever seen for this kind of service. The whole process was easy. All I had to do was pick a domain name, figure out what level of service I wanted, and start designing the website. Go over to Hostinger today and try it out for yourself. If you're not fully satisfied, they got a no-hassle, 30-day money-back guarantee. Again, get up to 91% off for all web hosting plans. Go to www.hostinger.com forward slash honest tech and use the coupon code Honest tech for your order. I know, just the title has some of you foaming at the mouth, but just, just hear me out. The book on LG for the past few years has been that they just can't hang. No one's buying their phones, so the phones must not be any good. But truth of the matter is, the phones have been very good. The problem has been that a few years ago, LG had some problems with boot loop issues, and that really took some of the steam out of their engines. But the boot loop issues have been solved for years now, and LG has continued to put out very good phones that offer features pretty much every other phone manufacturer has left behind. However, LG can't seem to advertise the phones. Hire a marketing department. I, 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 hire somebody. I don't know, can't do it. LG's flagship phones are not perfect, and I'll get into some of that as the video goes on, but what makes the LG V50 the best Android phone of 2019 is simply this. When it comes to form, features, and function, there's not a phone on the market that can beat it. Let's start with form. I'll be the first to admit that there's nothing out of the ordinary when it comes to the V50's design. Whereas a lot of other Android phones seem to be copying one another with their weird aspect ratios and curved screens and all that kind of thing, the V50 seems to be taking a good many of its cues from, well, um, the iPhone. It's hard to argue that LG isn't using the iPhone as an inspiration. A lot of phones have similar forms, but the LG V54 goes a lot of the extra long body style and curved screens of Samsung's phones and, and others for this more uh, um, flat screened thing that people seem to like. The V50 may even improve on some of the design elements it borrows from the iPhone and elsewhere. There's still a notch, but it's smaller than Apple's and it continues to house a wide angle selfie lens, which some Android manufacturers who actually put this technology in for the first time last year, and they ditched it with the 2019 phones. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas nearly every flagship phone this year has had a huge goiter of a camera lens thingy on the back, and it looks like next year's flagship phones are gonna take that design to full on, like, stage four tumor size, the V50 actually has no protruding lenses. The triple camera array here is flat, housed underneath the back glass. It includes the ultra wide lens, the wide lens, the telephoto lens that many flagships have this year. But whereas Samsung took away their manual mode in the software and both Pixel and iPhones don't have a uh, manual mode and haven't had it, well, this one does still. And then there's the video capabilities, not only 4K 30 and 60 frames per second, but also 24 frames per second for that cinematic goodness. The fingerprint sensor either went away or went under the screen this year. But the V50 retains the fingerprint sensor on the back this year. And it's actually one of the best, fastest uh, fingerprint readers that I've, I've used. Rear fingerprint sensors are problematic if you can't reach behind the phone to get to the fingerprint sensor, but they are still more reliable and more secure than under the screen fingerprint readers, at least the ones that I've tried. Once again, LG wins here, but not by abandoning features that work and people appreciate for features that no one asked for, but instead by keeping those features and still moving forward. A crazy, crazy philosophy, but it seems to be working for LG. With six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage with expandable memory as well, 
the V50 sits squarely in the middle of the pack when it comes to internal specs. It's got the Snapdragon 855 chip, just like everybody else does, and it performs well on a daily basis. I've had mine since it was released. I haven't had any slowdown. I haven't had any lag, anything like that. It's been relatively solid all the way through. It remains as smooth as the day that I got it. Of course, the Achilles heel of LG phones is the LG stock Android skin. It's not terrible, but it's close to terrible. And after using it for a week or two, almost everybody that I know switches to Nova Launcher, as, as do I, and never looks back. And before you claim that that alone should disqualify it as phone of the year, well, what about this? Isn't flexibility and customization one of the things that people love about Android? And so it, the fact that you can do that, it, it, shouldn't that be like, yeah. I thought so. The LG V50 on a daily basis performs just as well as many of the Android phones I've used this year. I like the S10 series, but again, Samsung made their phones too fiddly and packed with too many irrelevant features while ignoring some of the basic ones, like a headphone jack. Google seems to have some kind of complex about making phones that actually live up to their promise. The Pixel 4 was the closest Google has come to a great all-around phone this year, but for some reason they hobbled the phones with batteries that are way too small for reasons that no one, no one can understand. The V50's battery life, however, even after six months, is still, is still actually really very, very good. I can get about a day and a half's worth of charge out of this, which falls short of the newest two day plus batteries on the iPhones, but routinely beats Samsung's flagships and uh, definitely outpaces the Pixel 4. The POLED screen on this is one of the best screens I've, I've had the pleasure of using. It looks great when watching video or just looking around at different stuff, you know, pictures, etc., etc. It isn't tuned out of the box to be as punchy and saturated as Samsung screens, but you can get that if you want to. With There's a lot of adjustment inside this, which is something that's kind of nice about the V50. Also, the button layout makes sense, and I actually like that there's the Google Assistant button here on the side that's spaced far enough away from the volume buttons that you don't actually press it when you adjust the volume. So on pretty much every level, the V50 is on par with the other flagships from the other major players. So what puts it over the top to be the best Android phone of 2019, you ask? Well, I alluded to it a little bit when I talked about the retention of things like the fingerprint sensor, but let's get into it right here. The V50 is the best phone of 2019, not because of what it does to compete with all the other phones out there on features, although it does that very well. The V50 is the best Android phone of 2019 because of the features it has that other phones never had or have left behind in the name of progress. Yes, that includes manual mode in the camera app. It includes wide angle selfie lens. It includes retention of the fingerprint reader, but it goes beyond. But it goes beyond that. The V50 is not only a very well-appointed phone that stands out from its 2019 competition, but it also has the best audio and video features you'll find on any phone, anywhere, period. We've talked about some of the specialness of the camera stuff, but the audio is really where the V50 goes above and beyond any Android phone on the market. Much has been made about the V50's quad DAC headphone jack thing. The V50 has, quite simply, the best sounding headphone jack that's ever been put in a phone. It beats out a decent number of standalone DACs for sound quality, and it makes headphones come alive, particularly if you have more expensive, less sensitive audiophile headphones. Even if every phone on the market still had a headphone jack, the V50's headphone jack would be the best by a large margin. In addition to that, the recording capabilities on the V50 are without peer in the Android space. The built-in HD audio recording app allows you to record in concert mode, giving you quality recordings in louder environments, but it also has a custom mode that allows you to record lossless audio in a variety of file formats that you can export and use anywhere. Some of you might be out there saying, but the audio stuff doesn't matter to me. I'm not an audiophile or a musician, but that's that, that's not the point. The added bonuses of a great headphone jack and great audio features and video recording capabilities, that's just added value. The V50 is a fantastic phone that competes against other phones out there without even taking those additional features into consideration. And, and I didn't mention that the V50 is the only phone of 2019 that has 5G as standard, which I thought was kind of pointless when it rolled out, but now that 5G is coming out in many more markets and more quickly than I thought it would, 5G might actually end up being one of the better 
features that this phone has. Quite simply, the V50 is the best Android phone of 2019. It might not be the flashiest, it might not be the sexiest. LG might do a terrible, terrible job, LG of marketing their phones. And it might have only been available in the US on a couple of carriers and we couldn't get the second screen add-on that people could get in other regions, but it's a solid phone that outperforms against the competition. And beyond that, it has features that either no phone has or every phone has taken away. <laughs> As other phones try to be more similar to one another, LG continues to listen to its customers and give us still the features that we want. I hope that continues into 2020 and beyond. I mean, but how long can LG resist the need to become just like everybody else in order to sell phones? I hope they hang on for a while. What do you think about the LG V50? Let me know down in the comments. Let's have a boisterous discussion. If you have another phone that you want to put up against the LG V50 as best of the year, then let me know down in the comments as well. We can have these discussions. We can talk amongst ourselves. Thanks for being here. I really do appreciate it. If this was your first time and you want to come on back again, then like, subscribe, bell notified, all that kind of stuff, and you've been here before. Thank you so much for coming back again. We have special things that you can do. Join the, and become a member of the channel. We have merch down there in the description below. You can avail yourself of all those things. But in the meantime, time. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until next time, I'm out.